All right, it's always a pleasure to be here in the studio with you, my friend, Dan Rose, Dr. Dan Rose, Counseling Center at Columbus State University and uh, also in private practice and uh, a uh, podcast uh, extraordinaire, as we say it here. As and a lepidopterist. I'm sorry, excuse me, come again. Lepidopterist. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll define that I think that's, term for the rest of I think that's of somebody us. who collects butterflies. Oh, I think. Okay. You know. All right, well, you just, it's a great word to have in your vocabulary. It is. And you've been <laughs> wanting to use it for years, and this is. You just you, you come couldn't in find any place, so this is where you put it, right? <laughs> it's, uh, that doesn't come in handy. <laughs> the. Um, um, it, it, it reminds me of a, of a Morrissey lyric. I oh, was yeah? pinned and mounted like a butterfly. That's Ooh. from. Um, I think that's when in his tenure in the Smiths, I, and it came to mind too because someone just sent me a picture of of Morrissey made entirely of cats. They just took pictures of cats and created a Morrissey face. Yeah, where they do a little miniature thing. That yeah, comes so out it was to good. Yeah, it was, face. okay. So, um, it's all right, that uh, Moz made of cats. All right, somebody worked on that. Really, they they actually they, they worked they on did. it for you, and uh, they thought that was a good idea, and you would like it, or you would be. Uh, I, I, I don't know what that means. I'm saving up money for a tattoo. <laughs> More tattoos. <laughs> In fact, uh, my last tattoo, you know what it was? It just says, objects may appear smaller <laughs> than they are. Something like that, I think is what it said. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, we don't really want to see any of those tattoos uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in this uh, particular situation. All right, my friend, so what's on your mind today? Well, what's we got going a couple, we got a couple things. Uh, th- th- there was an interesting article that I uh, that I sent you, and maybe we can sort of dive a little bit into it, a little bit, right. you know, but because, uh, you know, I thought we would, um, we could, maybe we could expand on how to talk about some central mental health concepts and then be able to apply them in some form or fashion, you know, so, okay. so we can be, I mean, I know we're always remarkably practical. I mean, we're, this is a little like you know that yeah. car talk show, except one right. of us only one of us isn't dead. Yeah, well, <laughs> well that, that's... Uh, unfortunately, that that has happened. Today. That was a great <laughs> show, by the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone was telling me they made the noises of the car, like they'd have people call in, and at some point they tried to explain what was going on with their car, and they just made the yeah, noises. There was a lot like of noises, cars, yeah. right? So that was, yeah, was, that was all click and fun. clack. The click Tappet and clack. Brothers. The Tappet Brothers. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, you know, one of them died. The one that I think one of them is still alive, but one of them died. And people don't realize this. Choked on a hamster. Just no, that didn't. No, that didn't happen. Um, I'm pretty sure. sure it didn't happen, even though I have, I have no facts at hand. Well, people uh, don't realize this, but uh, <laughs> there are a lot of hamster-related deaths. Hamsters um, will leap into any opening they can, and if you happen to be speaking close to a hamster, it may decide to make that jump, and you uh, you could die. See, here's what happens. Um, and we we start off on what are we talking about today? Here's a great topic to talk about, and within a matter of seconds, um, we're off to something that we can't talk about. I don't know how that happens, but <laughs> it seems to be a regular routine on this uh, this situation here. Well, we want people to tune in well, and we'll listen to some of this mental health work. <laughs> maybe, but evidently, <laughs> you may have to we got some work other on things. the the hamster opening thing. <laughs> well, actually, it it it. What are the it, it the article? What is it? That's the uh, it's at the end of the world. It's twelve o'clock. I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. It was the end, no, end of the world. Right. You you paused so, because there's a noise outside. Yeah, and, the, the uh, siren. I thought that, it was the end that, of the world. That distractibility thing is still alive and well over there. So, <laughs> but um, it is relevant in this sense because the article makes it a point to talk about uh, and the author. Who was the author of this article? Let me just we give. Uh, um, Credit to which credits do. Yeah, and, that's always um, a good thing. Unfortunately, what came up was that picture of Moz made of cats. But um, <laughs> it's the biology of love. It's from um, Ion, um, uh, which is a—I uh, don't think it's a print magazine, but it's certainly it's um, it's a philosophy culture um, online, um, and they publish articles, and it's quite good. They're phenomenal. They really okay. are. Okay, right. but unfortunately, they're often like. Uh, uh, Seven hundred and fifty thousand words long. Okay, yeah, and that's right. So you make a commitment. If you decide <laughs> you to read one of these, you're gonna need to take a day off. Yeah, I've been down there. Down that road. But it's they're good, they're good. No, occasionally and, newspapers will do that, New York Times will do that. You start to read an article and you realize that there's no you're, ending. Yeah, you're you're uh, gonna be uh, and you just, you're gonna be there for a while. But you learn a lot, you, so it's you, a good you thing. S- you strap on your depends yeah, and so <laughs> and you you know, you just read this thing. You're gonna Speak for yourself, my friend. All right. So <laughs> so the 
biology of love. Well, all right, I and, like and the idea. The crux of the article is that you know that we are um, that there is a connection between um, love uh, and um, and and fear. There is a way in which our attachment to right. others causes us to detach and um, marginalize the folks that we're not attached to. So there's this, okay. uh, and the article makes a good point of talking about how there's this, there's this ancient network that um, is is um, uh, not precortical because cortex is always there, but it is older than the newer parts of our brain, and it has much more control over what we do and how we do things, mm. and um, primarily through you know things like oxytocin and uh, um, uh, dopamine. There is a way in which we interact with the world and our sense of self and our connection to self and even connection to the things that we value most are sort of part of this this ancient network. And part of the and the article makes a point to say that you know um, uh, the part of you that um, uh, drives you to give your mom a Mom's Day card is very similar to the same part of you that causes us to go to war. Okay. They are they are okay. they're connected. Right. And okay. so the article does a really good job, I think, of sort of laying out um, how to think about that. <laughs> And, and then at the end sort of gives an interesting way of sort of um, what they think would be the way to be able to, um, to mediate this. Um, and there are three, um, um, I think she talks about there are three things that sort of, if we had to define this, this ancient architecture that's often operating, it is um, oxytocin, which some people, you know, call the, uh, the chemical of love. It is something that uh, we feel in the presence of folks that we have connection to, friends, family, children, <coughs> um, lovers. If you're from uh, Alabama, that just all three. Uh, <laughs> that was a joke, right? You see, that's, that's what, exactly what happens. I mean, we're, we're following along there, but uh, you have to be prepared at all costs. That's all I can say. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, uh, yeah, that that cracked me up. Listen, that, that was uh, it was it was an opening and. Uh, there's no way you're gonna let that go by easily. You're gonna, you're gonna me and there. hamsters. We right, have a lot bring in common. Us, bring, bring us, bring us back to the moment where you were talking about these chemicals that affect the brain and have similarities with other things. So, well, all right, go there. There is um, um, the oxytocin. There is uh, um, the affili affiliative bond and this notion of synchrony. So there's a way in which um, and it, they. Operate on different levels. So there is um, in the uh, the baby in the presence of mom. Mom um, is bound to her baby by the neurochemical processes and hormonal processes, and um, that sort of drive this connection. And that it's the same with the child, and that operates at a at a, at a lower level. And then it generates that affiliative affiliative bond. And then there's this notion of synchrony that um, we have a tendency to do things as a group. We have a tendency to generate a rhythm. So there is the march of war. Um, there is everybody at a football game. There is, um, I'm about to go see my favorite band in the world next week. Yeah. Why? There won't be quite that many people there, but okay. it'll be me and a man and his dog. But okay. It'll be. Right. A, it'll be. They, a, they need to boost um, <laughs> ticket sales a little bit more for the Wire. I don't well, know. They, they need, <laughs> they need to play that achy, breaky art song. You oh were no, about. let's That's, not play that song at all. Let's not do any it, of that. It would be a big good line dance. <laughs> but as a group, the crowd reacts. So yeah. You're so there's this. That's it. And so these three things, she sort of links to say that, that they create the possibility of both wonderful things and then horrible things as well. And um, it, that makes a certain amount of sense that there is um, there is a um, uh, we like to value uh, overvalue this notion of consciousness and choice when in fact it is um, right, often right, subverted right. by something far older. Um, okay. it, we've talked in here before that part of the goal of the nervous system is to render as much automatic as possible. It's certainly far more efficient. Right. Uh, even though there may be some variance of, of consciousness among um, um, as we move down the phylogenetic spectrum in, in, uh, in, uh, in animals, but it may be safe to say that the majority of the animal kingdom operates f pretty much on automatic. I mean, there, okay. there's not a lot of... Um, right. Uh, self-reflection there's not of uh, well, the things that we value in consciousness are usually missing I would assume in a cockroach right you know 
Yeah, so, well, uh, and, and the idea that that we think we're in charge and we're conscious in making these choices, who to love and how to do those kind of things that that are normal parts of our our lives are. Uh, maybe chemically based. They maybe have a very primitive uh, origin there for they, us in some way. They're ways. certainly the core of us. And uh, th- th- there's a, a line in the article I thought that was really interesting, and it, and it was quoted. It was quoted for someone else, but that um, uh, things like oxytocin that allows uh, uh, the capacity to be, to be immobile without fear. And what I think makes that really interesting is it's either you know when you're um, particularly if you're a uh, uh, a cockroach. You got only a couple of choices. You got to eat, mate, and run so you won't get eaten. Right. 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 And so uh, there's something about uh, our ability as we move up that spectrum. Mammals in general that we we see play in all mammals. As far sure. as I know, we do. We see them in yeah. mice. Makes sense. Uh, we got a bunny. I, you don't realize this. Bunnies like to the play. They like affection. Um, yeah. They do. They're uh, you know, they also, I guess they taste good. I wouldn't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this one bunny rabbit, by the way, that you have, right? I mean, it, it's not started like, out as uh, one, and now we have four hundred and twelve. Well, that's what that's what that's what happened when I was a kid uh, early back in the day. That's exactly we got lots of bunnies. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> you know, there's there's, there's not a chemical a, going on there. Too, yeah, there's, sure. there is, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's I suddenly had to explain things to my kid, you know, where babies come from. Right. Uh, <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah, if they uh, misery really is where they come from. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. When when a part of your soul dies, a kid is born. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> See, I, I really, I, I hate to have to edit out pieces of this, uh, but and so far uh, it's been a quite a huge task for me to take care of this video, which eventually gets out to the public. So uh, well, we'll, we'll do that. Love and misery somehow yes, <laughs> there, there, there. may be the topic of the day. All right. So, so the, but there are these three. Yeah. So uh, what, what was that? I was talking about the um, um, oh, the idea of the, to be immobile without fear. And so think about it. There, there is that it is um, uh, to become dominant enough and to have a nervous system that fosters the ability to do something other than those three things. Because right now we're not doing any of those three things. Right. I mean, I don't. Um, I'm. I'm not going to get a chance to eat. Um, I don't think this is going to help my romantic uh, outlook in any form or fashion. No. But, <laughs> and it is possible that we could be in danger because of some of the things we said, but by and large. <laughs> right. I and if think, the lights come on, we don't scurry out of the room. We could. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm going to run under a refrigerator <laughs> real quick. Go. But, uh, <laughs> um, what I like about that is, you know, if you don't turn the lights on, you don't know you have bugs. Okay, keep the lights off. <laughs> I'm that just saying, is, uh, it's, there's a motto yeah, I just in this somewhere. Follow the logic, but that's wrong <laughs> that's, always. But. That's uh, maybe not the best motto to live by, but I would, you know, if you keep the lights off, you don't know you got bugs. Well, that's um, right. You don't know where you put that thing either. You can't find anything. But uh, all right, so so you're just saying this basic chemical reaction uh, happens at a at a base level for mm-hmm. us, and that. Uh, we're not so much in control, and these three things help us um, at, at that level. But then there's a consciousness where we have to we start to decide. Well, things, right? and this is where I think that she makes a point: things that go horribly awry because um, a cockroach or a a vole, let's say a vole, because people are less put off by voles, you know. And just it's you know that my alma mater, Tennessee Vols. Yes. Know, were, yeah. Okay. Okay. There. <laughs> no. I was no. thinking maybe you were inventing a new uh, species that we're having no, no, actually, to deal with. There is such a thing as a, the cockroaches. I'm not there sure. There is a thing no. called a vole. Okay. They're, okay. They're, they're like they're small shrew-like animals. You, oh. If you go in your backyard, you'll often see little like someone's made some some little holes in your yard. Uh, yes. Those I are have voles. Those. Matter of fact. So often those are voles. Not the armadillos. Okay, those but are bigger. The voles. <laughs> yeah, armadillos are bigger. Holes. Armadillos are bigger. Are bigger. But, um, thing to get us off track, please. <laughs> if, Help us here. Uh, if, is there is, is there any football team with an armadillo as a mascot? I don't know. Say um, somewhere out in Texas, I would imagine. <laughs> as a Texas arma. Um, interesting about armadillos. You realize that when I was a kid, we didn't see them. 
and right. th- they've literally spread. Like, they've re- literally. I think someone said they came from uh, they, they from Texas. They came east, and now they're everywhere. They're literally like they, this yeah. was not. They, if I had seen a, an armadillo when I was a kid, we'd all freaked out. Like, what is that? <laughs> right, you know? right. But who who armored that possum? I know. You know? <laughs> that would be our. Uh, our it'd be, it's a medieval possum, is what that is. Yes. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, that critter. Okay, there we go. But um, um, we, 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 where were we? We're talk, oh, we were talking about the. Um, yes. um, it's hard sometimes. It is. That's it's okay. We'll, Got to we'll get back there. to. We'll be there. But consciousness actually ends up being a bit of a problem because um, the vole, let's go back to voles. Yeah. Um, they're only concerned really with those three things to some degree, even though play, may, and uh, maternal bonding is necessary. May, uh, a cockroach is born able to do all those three things the minute it's born. Mammals have a period of. Uh, of uh, post-birth that they have to be able right. to mature, and they're often taught those things, sure. um, which m- generates that need for bonding, often generates bonding in social groups, all these sort of things sure. happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but what can happen between us and, say, the vole or the rat, whatever you want to say, is uh, we can begin to build systems. We can invest in our ideas in just the same way that we may invest in our children or invest in each other. And so suddenly you begin to, you can go to war with someone because they have a different religion than you. Right. We can we can suddenly generate in group parameters that are um, that are uh, uh, highly expansive. And so consciousness be it's a wonderful thing, but it also allows us uh, the possibility of uh, destroying ourselves and the planet. We might even make the assumption that maybe um, our, our, some of our current crises certainly reflect the fact that we think, but we not, and we can think in ways that it can be very destructive. Very destructive for for us all in some ways. Bernie, yeah. twenty twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. All right. But. Let's uh, steer clear of some of that. We'll be back uh, after that, but. Uh, <laughs> All right, so so the gist of the article is basically saying that we're not in uh, command of of these. Well, this is where the article gets good. Parts of our because existence. What are we supposed to do about this? How do we manage to to um, to navigate these these old um, these these reflexive elements of ourselves and the way they may have been molded or perverted by by uh, by the uh, uh, na- uh, the nurture and the society in which we're born. Yep. And, and, and she outlines three things. She talks about um, we can do that with the face, the light, and humor. She says okay. those are the three things. That's how we mediate and we make use of these systems in such a way that we can pull ourselves forward. She sounds like a dirty hippie. But no. she may be, but might be, uh, but but no, those, those kind of make sense. But you were talking about um, being scared a few minutes ago. I mean, this the this, this thing with with love. There's this 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 frightening part of it, well, or it, it, part it, that we react to. It, it allows you to to uh, because part of bonding, the child bonds to the people that it trusts, and it begins to generate some distrust for folks who aren't part of that bonding. So there is um there is both. In uh, it may be true that the cockroach has a um, a, uh, a homogeneous sphere of everything. Yes. But as mammals, higher primates, we are much more selective in that. And there's something about the way and who we fear that may be potentially destructive. So mm-hmm. I think that's the part. Okay. And when she talks about these sort of three ways, and when she talks about something like um, the the face, the light, and humor. Um, she pulls from a uh, philosopher named by the name of um, Levinas, and Levinas talks about how that the, at the heart of ethics is the face of the other, and it's a fancy way of sort of talking about how that when we are able to mentalize and to be aware of the humanity, um, to be em- empathic, and to be able to see the heart of the other, that in of itself generates a different experience. Um, if um, uh, right now I, I have a couple of folks on my uh, the Facebooks. You got one of them Facebooks? I got one. Okay, Facebook. Just started. You did? You just started Facebook? Yeah. So, um, and. Late, late to the party. No. But we're there. I got one of them MySpaces. You should go on the one of those. Oh, yeah. But. Uh, I'll send you an email on AOL and uh, we'll that's, go from that's, there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, LOL, I will. Um, MIA. Uh, but um, so the. Um, 
somebody will, will send me these things on Facebook, and I got a couple folks okay. I'm friends with back home, and they 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 may not get out of the mountains much. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so they'll often send things like you know, deport all Muslims, or they'll send that to you. They'll send that you know like you know okay. if you if, if you agree we should deport all mum, Muslims, share this on your whatever like this right. you know. That's, and that's a what we call Russian bot that just <laughs> sent that, right? Okay, well, it's not your cousin. In the well, mountains, I think right? my cousin may have gotten it from the Russian bot, and then now <laughs> okay, it's now it he's got to share it. <laughs> and actually, that's exactly how that works. <laughs> Probably, I'm so sure. I've it's, read. He's like, you know, I'm not sure what the Russians hope to, you know, to gain from <laughs> getting my cousin involved. The guy, you know, <laughs> yeah, we we've heard, <laughs> he has we've no heard teeth. about your cousin in a couple of episodes <laughs> so far. Want to send maybe send a donation? Thank you. Him, yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to help him, but. But um, it, it notice how that you can see that this is a um, uh, it is a complete misunderstanding of the other. I mean, not only is it a remarkable right. violation of our Constitution, which you know that I assume because yeah, I wanted to say my cousin, you can be as racist and as Islamophobic as you want, but you realize if if they can do that to them, at some point they can do that to you They're too. They're going to do that to him, <laughs> buddy. I'm just saying, saying, you know, that's what I was. Part of the reason we got to put up with people we don't like is because if you don't put up with it, at some point you make it. <laughs> yeah, dance. you're the next. <laughs> you're next. In line. So yeah, but I'll. I'll so he I, doesn't get that concept just yet. When I hang out with him, we'll, we'll go over the nuances. You got to go over. <laughs> You gotta go we'll say, you know what? I gotta tell you about this. You know, <laughs> and I hate to say this, you're already not on the top of the heap. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, not going to be that long before he's gone, right? That's yeah, you ain't got a lot, of, a lot of power in this. But um, but the notion of the face, if I'm hearing this right, it it's almost it it, it um, for me it it was the idea that um, you you can uh, project all kinds of negatives on to other people but when you meet them there's mm-hmm. a face to face if they're talking literally face to face then mm-hmm. that will change a lot of things that are going on in terms of relationship with people you have a friend who uh, who let's be uh, uh, another guy i grew up with is more than a little slightly racist but he would always tell me a story like once we graduated and he started working he was working in the construction industry and uh, he would talk, tell me about um coworker yeah, and the coworker he would mention was African American. I would say, well, right. I thought you didn't like African Americans. He said, well, this guy's different. It's like, oh, okay. And then he would talk about another coworker <laughs> who also seemed to be African American. He said, oh, that guy's different too. Yeah. And then I thought yeah. I could come up with an equation. Right. If we yeah. need to introduce him to enough, enough, <laughs> at some point there's a saturation. <laughs> He's going to be fine with all. He's going to say, wait a minute, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, maybe I need to rethink yeah, this racist guys, no, thing. No. It might not. Uh, well, send him this article. I know it's 40,000 words long, but, you know, maybe you need to talk with him about that's, that. That's not happening. That's not going to happen. Gonna happen. Okay, I got but um, I think that uh, when you talk about that face, there is a that there is something that moves in us that generates that affiliative bond when we humanize the other. That is certainly, right. I think there is, you know, in, in, in lots of ways. Look, look at how... Um, uh, politics at the moment. Uh, anytime somebody in, I'll hear people say, you know, uh, Republicans or Democrats, as if, as if this meant a certain thing. Right. Like you know, like you know, the Democrats are destroying the country, or the right. Republicans. I'm like, well. Some of them may be, but what are the other? Well, first off, I'm a member of the Democratic Party, and the fact that they could do anything, accomplish anything as a group is yeah, really— Yeah, that, that, that circle, <laughs> circle, firing squad, this inner circle is not going to get not, off the dime for a lot of things. But, yeah, it's yeah, not, I, I mean, you know— Probably was, getting that out, but yeah, that's a yeah, it's not, uh, right. I think you have far more faith in the party than I do. <laughs> do you think they could accomplish these things? And, you know, you know, I wish I wish they were more like the way you think they it, are. It's happened in the past, so. So uh, I'll hold out, and maybe something will happen eventually. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But um, so that th- there is something that that when we begin to to see the folks that we group together as an individual and have that indivi- in individual connection, then something shifts and changes. So that there is there is this notion of the face, and so uh, we we talk and hear a lot about this notion of mentalization, and, yes. and that the the act of mentalization is turning to the face of the other and seeing their depth and complexity finding a heartbeat in them right. and in moments of of high emotionality when our amygdala is going off like a car alarm and we're find ourselves falling back into that fight flight or freeze we don't think of subtleties of the other we are mm-hmm. either you know we, we are actively attempting to be able to preserve ourselves or to preserve whatever parts um, now that we can fight for ideas trying to preserve those too 
you know, like the idea that somehow um, one political party is going to undermine some basic principle of the other. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I mean, it may be true with Republicans. I'm kidding. I'm joking. joking, joking. No, that's all all right. Let's see it. I I expected things like that. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, no. But there is there there is this 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 slippage. So that that's the idea of the um, of the face. And the second one is this notion of the light. And this is interesting. What I think she really, this is sort of abbreviating the light of knowledge. Oh, okay. Because um, there is something about our capacity to to understand, to learn, and to continue to grow in some ways. It's very important. And so that is a thing. So it's not only do we have, a, we have this, this visceral and almost primitive account of, uh, uh, encounter with the other that generates this sense of connection. We have the capacity to begin to understand them okay. and to understand yeah. ourselves. And that makes a big difference. And That's You can huge. think of, we're talking about politics, for instance, like, um, um, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that there isn't a political party anywhere in the United States that thinks it's a good idea that children starve to death. Makes Probably, sense. right. I think Probably. we can, yeah. whatever. Cross now, the board. I, and think I think we're all good. But, however, if, if you enter certain political discourses, some would make you think that, well, that actually that's what they want. That's what the other group wants. <laughs> that's right, right. Okay. yeah, or yeah. whatever the case may be. So, But your ability to be able to say, well, first off, what does the other person party actually want? Uh, what we definitely find is is that um, there may be different policies, there may be different emphasis, uh, uh, an emphasis on what this might mean or what it might not mean. Mm-hmm. But the more we become aware of this, and also we move even further into, well, why would we need to split the world into into black and white? This goes back to the light of knowledge can help us to understand these very primitive mechanisms that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, that's that's you know that part of the reason why I read the article and send it to you is the more we know, right? The more we grow, the more we have the capacity to be able to transform ourselves and the lives around us in more positive ways. That's the essence of increased knowledge, right? It's uh, yeah. no, I I, I I like it. I like I like the idea, but I, I'm not so sure sure that it takes place often because as you were talking I was thinking of the it has to be a person within that group that says wait a minute maybe the other group has an idea or maybe they're not so bad or maybe we need to think about how we're viewing this it always takes someone in in the in group to be able to say wait let's think about this or let's meet with someone else or let's reach out in some ways that, that I think that's what's missing these days it seems like well, you, you miss in this notion mention the notion of the Russian bot for instance that there, that there may be um, other players or there are other folks that would benefit from us becoming more and more divided. Right, and blaming other people. All of that plays into the hand and more chaos, and that's so, what, yeah, if, if, where if we're it's, going. It's, it's, if it's we're a form of already. psychological and political warfare that now that we live in a connected world that was unheard of before. I mean, yes, used not to, that long ago, really, if you think about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, used to you just drop pamphlets and hope somebody read them. That you is know? right. But, yeah. And now you can literally, you know, you can get a thousand pamphlets literally finding you wherever you go, and they're, you know... <laughs> Some of them rather convincing. Uh, so. I think it's uh, yeah, it's just kind of a scary, scary thing because uh, the unknown and that kind of thing with people. And so what happens is you want to stay closer in your group uh, because you think the group aligns with your thinking. I'm not sure that's that's happened. Uh, that's a real thing or not because maybe there's a, a uh, you know just a diversity of thought about what's going on and how things should go within a single group what's well, interesting because I'm, I'm uh, I've set this task um, uh, to uh, before I see my favorite band in the world next yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna listen to every single album they've ever uh, put out Okay, and which is easy because they never did put an album out. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, hey, <laughs> it was a uh, never. They know had a snippet. Where it's going. <laughs> it was know. a tape loop. It's the same right. thing. Right. It's the, it's the same, same sound for five seconds. It's not I really mean, a band. It was uh, just but, yeah, people. It's just a bunch of otters. Yeah. Um, they're cute. Um, the um, um, they actually have 17 albums, by the way, and I'm Uh-oh. I'm only I'm Here only up go. to six. So I got, got you got a I got 11 week. more to go. <laughs> you got before, a week to go. For that, and yeah. I I work 80 hours a week, so I'm not having a, <laughs> how I'm going to be able to squeeze these in. But um, I'm also reading. Uh, uh, there's a there were several books on them, but the one that came out a few years ago, uh, uh, 2012, I think, 2013, um, and how they're. Um, 
they have uh, it's the nature of the band that they continually undermine any potential success they would have because they would continually do things that would just alienate you know the average consumer and test the people that actually like them too yeah <laughs> and so yeah. like you know like examples of like um what is it? Uh, they had a. Um, <laughs> it almost sounds like an abusive relationship. The more and more punishment, well, the longer you stay. Really what, like, what's going on? You know, here? like. Uh, um, uh, what was it? Uh, they have a song called "The Drill," and it came out in I think '85 is when this came out, and the song can last three minutes or forty, and uh, it's one note, and it's really just sort of a collection of sounds that they do as a group, and somebody was had, t- had uh, was upset at the drummer and one of the roadie for another band or whatever and they took a, one of his equipment off the stage and his reply was you can take anything off it's not going to affect this song <laughs> and i thought that's the kind of song you have okay. you know you could you know okay. give me a squeaky toy it's not gonna so <laughs> they're doing their own thing here <laughs> this are. group is doing it and they don't care uh, but, but evidently how but. i think connects to this a little is that there's there is um there, they came up at a time when, and it's still the case, particularly underground music, there's an aversion to joining. Okay. That there's something about the death of expression if you join too much. And I think part of what may have drawn me to them back when I was young, I had the album and I, first off, they looked like me. I was like, this is a band that looks like me. And, um, but they also were, um, were unabashedly weird and disjointed and oblique in ways that they could be play that they could play with you know and so yeah. there is something about this notion of affiliation and tension around affiliation that can drive art and can drive all sorts of things it can be taken too far i think in their case you know there are a couple of points when you know they uh um uh, when instead of playing the the la- uh, a song in a concert, the bass player just started throwing sliced bread at people. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> that doesn't you know it doesn't. <laughs> well, wait. Didn't he have to prepare by no. having a loaf of he bread? He had a loaf of bread. I mean, where did the loaf of bread come it. from? Did he? Prepare? I'm going <laughs> to throw had, this at the. Uh, <laughs> I think he was he was he was ready to play. Band. I'm not sure about this band. Play this a loaf point. of bread. Also, another thing they they, they, but have, they stayed together for some reason. Forty years. But they have. Uh, My God. Their first three albums are like legendary, and uh, when they regrouped in the 80s, um, they made a decision they were not going to play anything from their old albums. They were only going to play things they had just written. And as you can imagine... No, that's not what concert goers uh, want <laughs> well, to do at all. What they they did is to hear the old, the one they came from. They from. hired another band to play covers of their old albums and so the opening oh, band okay. was right, named that's... after one of their songs and so they would play and then but people would come to the concert and say wow i'm not sure why or was the op- why they opened but they were great but that second band they sucked <laughs> <laughs> That kind of, that almost backfired on them. <laughs> it does, that, you know. Uh, that's nice. Uh, so, <laughs> so why are we talking about these? Guys? <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, nice. all right. See if we can come back. I, I'm, I'm, right, I'm saturated. Right. This. So, here's the thing about this notion of knowledge. Well, actually, connects this with this notion of knowledge too, is that if if part of the light of knowledge is important, right. what also is important about that is to know yourself, to have under some understanding of your motivations, to have the capacity to invest in um, in becoming increasingly aware of what motivates you, what you like, what's important to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I was sort of what I was mentioning in the band. Like I, I can see where I might gravitate toward this band instead of the Eagles. Right. Because, you know, it would be – I would be averse to a band that is popular in a way because – they um, and knowing that would might make me able to wait a minute. I no longer have to hate the Eagles. I can listen to some songs. Joe Walsh, right? Era, the Eagles, you know, yeah. not so bad. And never saw that coming. <laughs> you didn't see Joe, uh, Joe. Joe Joe Walsh joining the Eagles. Never I saw said, it coming. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, yeah. I think he's still in the Eagles. As a matter of fact. Yeah, I guess so. But um, <laughs> James Gang, remember the James Gang? Yeah, was, had those albums. A, yeah, it was. Uh, so. Um, he had a successful solo career, I think, before he joined the Be- yeah, the he, Eagles too. I was yeah, like, yeah, he, he, did. Thought he didn't need the money, but yeah. um, um, so knowledge and self knowledge is important. Um, sure. In the third that she talks about that I think is interesting, and this is um, humor. 
Yeah. That well, it, we've certainly uh, uh, in some way <laughs> attempted some of that today. Well, I don't know uh, why you know, that turns out other people may disagree. They but. usually do. <laughs> but, um, uh, that allows someone to have. To, she talks about it in two ways, or at least one way, but I think I can combine it in several. It allows you to be able to to join disparate things. Humor often right. involves sort of combining things that don't belong. It yeah, also yeah. generates. A, 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 a distance from things and the act of laughing you're no longer sort of consumed by a thing you have so it, it, it allows a certain kamikaze perspective it's it it um, it in the act of laughing you are no longer seriously entrenched and so um, she doesn't talk a lot about humor in that sense but if you can think about like you can make jokes about anything sure you can I think I told this joke. I told there, there's a whole whole bunch of um, of uh, uh, survivors of of some of the concentration camps in uh, after World War II. They had there were jokes they would tell, and right. um, these were you know these were usually Jewish folk. And uh, one of the ones jokes they tell is um, I may have talked this before, but I'll say it again. All right. It is um, uh, two Jewish men are uh, are in heaven and they're sitting under a tree and they're telling stories about how they died. Right. And uh, one of them says, you know, um, wasn't it funny they were about to lead you to the showers and you tripped and you fell and you hit your head and you died before they even had a chance to gas you. Ah, they're laughing and then they right, start laughing. Right. And the guy turns and goes, yeah, what about you, man? You know, you, uh, they were about to shoot you. Right before they shot you, you had a heart attack because they'd worked <laughs> you to death. Ah, oh, it's funny, funny. Well, God's walking by and hears this. And he's, he's, right. he's appalled. He's like, holy cow, what is He said, guys, 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 you know, what? I don't, how can you find that funny? And one of the Jewish guy turns around and he puts his hand on God's shoulder and says, "You know, you'd find it funny, but you weren't there." Oh, <laughs> wow! But uh, see, yeah, okay, so it's a way of uh, yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> I'll let that one just settle a little bit here. <laughs> but see that humor. Yeah, the, hu- the, the humor will allow you to deal with some things that are very. Yeah, ma- know, maybe that didn't. Uh, right? cut, maybe that wasn't as funny. Ha ha. It was. <laughs> right. Right. Disturbing. Maybe <laughs> that that. But, sometimes but jokes are disturbing. How think, embedded in that joke, whether you find it funny or not, is this notion that there's a theological component to this. There's a capacity to be able to to distance yourself a little bit from something that was very difficult, and to be able to think about it in ways you otherwise couldn't. Right. There's something important in there. I think something useful and combined with those three things right if we had the capacity to connect and see someone as a whole object and mentalize we have to be able to be able to understand themselves and our and and uh, uh, themselves and ourselves right. and we have the capacity at the end of the day to find the whole thing just a little funny right then maybe we can make it through okay well, I certainly like I like the 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 idea, and and implied in that is uh, some sense of openness, and w- willing to examine what's going on with you, look at the other person, don't just discount them, and uh, boy, don't we need more of that? I don't know how we uh, kind of get back to that that idea, but I like all three of those. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it may be that that. Um you know, the enemy of all three of those things, uh, at least the way the article sort of puts it up, is that there is the primitive parts of us, the oldest parts of us that are there to keep ourselves safe, to protect our children, to be able to keep um, the things that are important to us alive and safe. They can also get us in trouble. And that, you know, one of the benefits of, um, of this global connectivity we have yeah. is the possibility that we can begin to form bonds and connections that we could never before. Just like you before right. you had to f- drop pamphlets on people. I can literally, in seconds, talk to somebody in Siberia or right. somebody in Guam. Yes. Uh, you can literally be, you know, so there's the potential for some of the boundaries we set to begin to blur. And mm-hmm. I think that's a, that's part of what makes things so scary. Like when you think something like Brexit and building walls and whatnot, Mm-hmm. There is um, this tension between this old n- notion of affiliation 
and all, and the idea that we're moving to a place where there could be a point where nations don't matter as much as they did before, and that maybe that's scary, you know. The, I think it is. The nuclear probably. family doesn't look the way that it used to. There was that I was watching. Um, you ever watch on the? You ever go on them YouTube's and watch them things? Yes, unfortunately, I have. Yeah, there's some bad things on there. <laughs> yeah, watch out for YouTube. <laughs> Except our channel. That's right. It's, <laughs> but uh, there's a show where they talk about like um, I think it's called Company Man, and they 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 choose a brand. Or a, um, a store, and they talk about its history, and they show you, you know, mm-hmm. how well it's done, and you know how they manage to maintain profit margins or loss and whatnot. I'm not sure why I watch this, but I watch it. right, okay. <laughs> well, we all do it. Well, it goes right? back we to that. Find those things, right? I mean, that, that second thing, the knowledge thing. I always like. I don't know anything about this. So I want to know something about it. So uh, you know, my case is, and it really is fascinating, you know. But they're talking about Cracker Barrel, and at one point, Cracker Barrel in the '90s, I think, had a. Um, for a brief time, they had it written into their um, their 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 um, uh, operating manual that they wouldn't hire gay people because mm-hmm. they didn't represent um, their values, their heteronormative values, right, and whatnot, right. and so they should be fired. Okay. Well, that didn't go over so well. <laughs> didn't didn't go over so well, and um, I think this may be an example though that there was. Uh, there's a natural fear of things changing. So I could certainly see the CEO right. or other folks saying, you know, this scares me that there could be a world where there are people different than me doing things differently. Right. And what often folks focus on is somehow that, you know, um, um, uh, gay rights means that uh, um, it's all about um, the way in which certain people, gay folks, um, uh, express sexual intimacy or sex and that's really not what it is at all I mean everybody knows when you get married you stop having sex so that's not <laughs> that's not uh, <laughs> we're, we're the, of the three the humor is always going to be there it is yeah, for us uh, uh, no uh, doubt about that that's always going to be there but uh, <laughs> Somebody said uh, they were all for gay rights because gay people should just be just as miserable as straight as people. You guys right. deserve yeah, it. I've heard that. Uh, I've heard that was, uh, that but, uh, but you can see at each of these points, there's this this moment of tension. That's then we're trying to navigate this this um, this uh, this fear driven connection uh, with the possibility of growth. And how to balance those two things. Mm-hmm. And, and even though I, I don't, I tend to move toward the left end of things, our conservative brothers and sisters have a point too. There's something about preserving things that are important. We don't throw the baby out the bathwater. Right. The act of learning is not to jettison everything that came before, but to scaffold on top of it, right? That there yeah. is, there's a sure, building on sense. it. Yeah. So so that's why, particularly we talk about politics, the goal is you know not to, to destroy the other side. We need the other side to be as strong as we are because there are things they're right about. And there are things that we could never be right about if we can't engage in dialogue with them. This is, right. this is you know. Um, it's being talked about a lot right now, I think, uh, especially in our political world, of reaching out. But I don't see too much of that. Occasionally I hear the person saying, hey, we need to listen to this side. Maybe they've got some ideas uh, that fit with ours or so forth. Mm-hmm. But um, we've been – placed in this um and i think media has a lot to do with it and the radio personalities and all the others that have been out there that tout the differences mm-hmm. and blame the others it's a blame game in a lot of ways well, it's pointing the finger outward and never looking unfortunately this the, the, and there's there's some truth to this at least i found that anybody who differs from me politically is a pedophile Just oh <laughs> wow so um, you're part of the problem. Is that <laughs> evidently, is what uh, what that means. So uh, we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. But I think it's really hard. Also, the the idea that it's comfortable to be in this group, and you imagine that everybody believes along the same lines. Unless, unless that's, you're that's projection. Unless something. you're the band Wire, which seems to be wanting to be alienate everybody. <laughs> yeah. So there's yeah. a different strategy. There there's both the belonging and then there is the perverse these are independent uh, <laughs> wealthy people that are doing this because they can't make no, they're, they're doing not, this. They're well, not. Either you and a couple of other and that guy with the dog are supporting him. <laughs> yeah, we're, that's we're, what I was thinking. It's interesting right. because uh, the uh, when they toured the United States their their tour manager at the time it had I had previously been the tour manager for Ozzy Osbourne right. and he was talking about the difference. He says, Yeah it was really different this time with with Ozzy, we attracted a lot of strippers, but with Wire, it was a lot of conceptual artists. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very different. Not that expected. Is, it's not you know I'm the not rock sure. and roll lifestyle involved you know paper mache. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> for them it wasn't uh, you know well the idea of humor uh really probably needs to it may not be the third it maybe <laughs> need to be the first but uh in lots of ways maybe that's a way to open things up and you to mm-hmm. kind of recognize the other well, person and do some things at right. each of these things whether it's an act of getting uh, uh, the the burst of light that comes from knowing yourself that that aha moment that moment of awe that comes from encountering something outside yourself or within yourself mm-hmm. or it is the moment you hang out with a friend or you see your child or you're the person that you love or in the act of laughing at a joke something happens inside of you there there are right. some discrete neurochemical events that are all sort of in some way connected yeah and there are things that sense. we can per- pursue in ways that are constructive or de- destructive and uh, knowing that i think is important humor um the act of laughing allows you to be able to be in ways you otherwise couldn't and you know there are different kinds of laugh there's a derisive laughter whatever the case may be maybe right. at one point we should talk about the different because the psychology yeah. of humor is interesting in and yeah, of itself yeah i'd love to talk about but um about that you know there sure. there's a difference between a racist joke which is um uh, this in the service of affiliative behavior uh in a way and a joke that is um um, universal or, or derog- self-derogatory, they, they they scratch different itches. Right. So you know. Yeah, I but, think that would be a great great topic. Mm-hmm. But people need to to lighten up in some ways, right? I mean, uh, particularly these these the tribalism that we've talked about many times here, and and the camps that people find themselves in, and and it's us against them, and setting those hard boundaries. Uh, there has to be some way to sort of break through that and allow people to talk to each other mm-hmm. and. Uh, and do the face, as you say, and mm-hmm. then the light. Okay, I got it. Mm-hmm. Anything else to say about that, my friend? Well, I was thinking about the trough because we talked about the um, the uh, uh, um, the the um, what, what 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 is the term? The um, the bell shaped curve. Yeah, the bell shape. We're talking it's about. Called, uh, but it's not. It's also referred to as the. Um, uh, well, this is my my trough and i was it's uh, and how many points i've managed to make to the uh, to the bottom a couple of times today I was yeah aiming. i think you've been there a couple of times <laughs> and uh, i'm glad we don't have a camera so that we have to we portray that and no one actually gets to see that um uh, sort <laughs> of reverse uh, <laughs> bell shaped curve it looks a little suggestive there. i'm told, uh, uh, told. So, so we've been told <laughs> Oh, it's nothing like humor, and uh, good to understand. Wait, maybe, you, maybe this is takeaway with this. This All is right, going to be the takeaway. All right, with come this. back. Because for for one thing, I, we we want to be able to you know we, we the takeaway is is that what I think is important about articles like this is they they show the possibility of hope that there is something about us that we often have to find a way to mediate to confront, do something with, and we're certainly a miss, and things can go horribly awry if we don't do that. But it's possible. And that we have the capacity to continue to grow as a species. We have a, we, have, we can uh, we still have the capacity to be able to do something with, with the world that we're in. It, it looks grimmer and grimmer that we're headed towards some problems that we've created, um, but there's the possibility both as an individual and as a group that we could do things differently. And maybe that you start as an individual. Um, right. How do you move throughout your day that you are aware of the people around you? How do you move throughout your day that you listen to yourself and you're open to the things that you might learn? And how often do you laugh? Those are, uh, you know, that that's not a not a bad recipe for making it through a day and maybe even building a life on. Hey, I like that. I don't think we can uh, expound upon uh, too much more than that, but uh, give it a try. All right, Dan, good fun. We'll see you next time.